Hey guys, welcome to the first ever Click and Growers Facebook group live. We've had Facebook live events before on our main page and now this is the first time we're having it in, in our community group. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I'm joined by my colleague here, Miriam. Hi. Thank you so much. And we have a beautiful Smart Garden 3 as well joining us on the table today. Um, as I say, this is our first Facebook Live in the community group. We are happy to say and to announce that um, our community members, uh, the number of community members has uh, more than doubled in the last five months. So that's a good sign that you are engaging. Uh, we're delighted to see that you are really excited about growing plants indoors. You are excited about uh, living sustainably, living a green life. And so thank you so much for really being part of this journey with us today. Um, we're also you know, very excited about the fact that it's Green January, you know, hashtag Green January. Uh, it's been one of our campaigns this month. We've been really curious to see how you would like to uh, get involved in living a more sustainable life, um, what choices you are making in your everyday life to, uh, to choose to live um, greener. So we've had, for example, the photo contest. We've seen lots of lovely uh, smart garden photos, uh, which you sent us, and that's now uh, done. Then you can see the winners on our Facebook page. So once again, thank you so much for taking part in that. Uh, there's also been the uh, DIY challenge today in our blog, how to create your own indoor hanging herb garden. We've had tips for your New Year's resolutions, how to keep your New Year's resolutions, a uh, great smoothie recipe, um, articles about incredible plants to grow in 2019. <coughs> So all that and so much more. So once again, thank you so much for, for being part of this um, uh, campaign this month and for joining us for this community live event. How's your Green January been going so far, Miriam? <laughs> I actually I got another uh, small garden nine. Did just you? for my daughter because I, got, I had one garden, but she keeps taking my plants. So mm -hmm. now she has her own. <laughs> That's kind of one thing. Oh, we planted uh, lemon palm. So it's kind of safe for children, and she likes to tease, so she can have her mm -hmm. own plants now. So it's kind of good. Awesome. Well, it's so dark and so snowy at the moment where yeah. we are, so we can't do much outdoors, so we yeah. have to stick indoors. Yes, all the more reason for uh, yeah. growing plants indoors. And you? Did you, um, did you do something for your green <laughs> yes. January? Yes, I did, oh. yes. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to trying some new plants, which I haven't tried before, and growing in my smart garden. Um, so I have a smart garden nine at home. So we've been growing some oregano uh, and some chili peppers, which are still coming along quite nicely. Mm, good to know. It's good to hear. Um, we also, I'd like to mention, we have a Smart Garden 3 giveaway. So in our Facebook community group, uh, we are asking you to uh, submit a photo of your Smart Garden and tell us what plants you have already grown this green January. And the deadline is tomorrow, so please make sure you enter quickly if you haven't already done so. Um, and the winner of that will get a Smart Garden 3. I can't think of an easier way to have a yeah. chance of winning a, a beautiful Smart Garden 3. So, yeah, the deadline is tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Oh, so, it's so been, you really have to hurry up. It's been going on for a while, so the deadline is tomorrow. Definitely take part if you'd like mm. to have a chance to win a Smart Garden 3. <coughs> we also launched, um, as you know, Miriam, the Black Pansy plant this month. A uh, very, very artistic plant, um, you know, one which is uh, we are very proud of. It's a new addition to our collection. We mentioned it in our Facebook Live on our other page. Uh, it's a very inspiring, uh, artistic uh, plant, so we're very delighted to have that as part of our uh, new collection. So, now the main topic of this live is to talk about uh, something which you have chosen, our community members, and that is plant <coughs> combinations that grow well in your smart garden. So, we're very lucky to have Miriam here today. <laughs> Thank and, you. Um, I'd like to keep this time to you now to give any, any tips about um, you know, combining plants. As we know, um, our smart gardens are designed to be able to you know, grow a variety of plants at any time of the year. Uh -huh. But is there any, <coughs> anything special about certain plants which grow well together? That's what we'd uh, like to ask you today. Yeah, there's quite many tips that I would like to share yeah. with you. Uh, either it's a smart garden three or a smart garden nine that definitely goes for both gardens you have. Um, in the in the community, I often see pictures mm. uh, of gardens where the plants are in totally different growing stages, and then I see that some of you are, have encountered some problems that some small plants are growing in the shade of the larger plants, 
some larger plants are stealing light from the small ones. So there's a few basic things that I would really like to okay. tell. Like it's a learning moment now. Take it away. All right. The first thing is that if you're planning to buy plant pots, go over the plant care tips. It's very easy to find in our rev store. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can learn quite many things from the plant care tips that our team has created. Uh, firstly, that you should look at is that when should I harvest my plant or whether it's edible or not. If you look at the harvesting things, you, you can see that there are about four groups of plants. Mm -hmm. It's salad greens that are very short lived usually. Right. They are harvested in about 40 days depends how often you take the leaves off. Then there is a couple of herbs that are quite short-lived, like dill, mm -hmm. coriander. You get the harvest from them and they don't really reproduce that nicely. So they're kind of short-lived. Also, basil can be treated like short-lived. It depends how you take mm -hmm. care of it. Then there's herbs that last quite long. They also take more time to grow. For example, rosemary, garden sage and thyme. This is also what I chose here today to show you guys. And then there's fruiting plants, mm -hmm. like all the chilies, tomatoes, strawberries. So they are the most long-lived. Okay. So the main tip is that you see how it how it is harvested. That's one thing to keep in mind. Right. Right. Uh, so here we chose three plants herbs that are long-lived and as you can see the garden sage is about to okay it's almost touching the lamp and I should do something about it so I think your instinct is, tell, is telling you to raise the lamp but you should not do that because if you raise the lamp much higher the rosemary here won't get that much light to grow and it will go leggy and it's not nice anymore mm -hmm. so I, I would just cut it off nicely um, and also, it's one thing that I also <laughs> I always see in the community is that you have a beautiful small garden line and you have everything going there, going on. It's like a mess. You have a lot of plants going there. That's okay. Actually, you can grow more or less all the plants in your garden at the same time. But just keep in mind, make sure that also the very tiny plants or the plants that you just have started that they also get the light that they need. So if you feel you have to raise the lamp, don't just cut it back. That allows the new plants to get enough light. Sometimes people have asked, is it possible to move the pots around within the garden? You can do that, yes. If, if you feel like, maybe it's, it's actually a very good idea. What if you have a small garden line and there's like three empty spots? Uh, all around the garden. Yes, you can move them easily around, put the new plants on one corner, larger plants on the other corner, but just make sure you don't raise the lamp too high. Mm. It will it will be quite messy. Is there a certain um, distance that you recommend before, if you really, really have to, Do what? to raise the plants, or is it always better just to trim? Um, I always use one uh, extension from the start to the very end mm -hmm. and I would rather cut than raise. Okay. Good tip. <laughs> yes. It's just logical. Yes. I think the only plant that may require uh, raising the lamp is the yellow chili. That really grows taller than other chilies. Mm -hmm. but every plant can be grown with one extension like easily yeah i'm just gonna quickly take this now this is something we've touched on before but um mm -hmm. as you were cutting those uh, those plants there some people who don't already know would like to know perhaps is there a certain technique you have to use for cutting the um, plants or is there anything you need to be careful of when doing so you don't really have to be careful. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that if you've been growing these plants for two months or two months now, you get in touch with them and they start caring about the plants. You roughly just cut them. Here I have thyme that is totally out of control. I think it's the last chance to get a very good harvest. So, well, let's say I want to get another harvest. Right. So there's like 
five centimeters and I just cut it off. It really doesn't feel pain. <laughs> it loves to be cut. If, if you cut it, it will produce more stems quite quickly. But now that you see, I've got it the pine quite low, mm -hmm. as you can see. I'm gonna snip some garden sage clover that it wouldn't steal the light from the pine. And then they can grow here quite friendly and bring me even more joy and produce even more. I'm gonna snip some rosemary here too. But I always say that, take a look at the, the plant care tips. Mm -hmm. They're pretty useful and Definitely. So if you go to our website and click on the on the top banner, there is a, uh, you can see our plant pod page and access that and click on the plant you wish to know about. And then under that, you will see a plant care tab. So click on that and you will have um, some great information there for harvesting um, and some timelines when you can expect to see your uh, first uh, fruits or first sprouts, whatever it may be. Yeah. So definitely check those out. Very, very, very useful information there. Also, if you can't find an answer to your question from the care tips, you can visit the gardeners forum. Mm -hmm. You can talk to the gardeners directly from there. Yes. And if it still doesn't help, then you go to the community and yes, <laughs> ask yes. other cookers, like, what's going on? So Miriam is actually one of our expert gardeners who actually does a lot of answering your questions mm -hmm. in this forum. So we're very grateful to her for, for help with that. And uh, we're always here for you. So if you ever have any plant-based questions, definitely get in touch with us. It's our mission to, to help you to, to enjoy these plants and to really enjoy growing at home. So we hope you find a lot of uh, help in that, that forum. Now, we do have some time as well for some comments and some questions. We have some here. I've been given this uh, up-to-date version here. So uh, Bjorn the Town is asking, if one plant starts to reach the lights, and others are still small. Mm -hmm. Should I add an extension or not? You've already covered this, I guess. Um, so rather than adding an extension, it's quite often good to better to cut them back wherever possible. If it's an edible plant, an edible herb, which is probably what it is, I would rather cut it back a bit, not to raise the lamp. Yeah. Okay. And Michelle Papalia Cheng says, hello from Rochester, New York, USA. Hello to you too. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Connie Stephen Chu, Stephanie Chu says, yes, yellow chili really grows very tall. It does. Yeah, I, I did see your photos. <laughs> I remember they were growing nicely, but they were in their size. So they were fruiting quite nicely, even though they were taller mm -hmm. than usual. Yeah. Annie O'Carry would like to know, what is a good plant to grow next to yellow chili? Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, if you're a chili friend and you already have yellow chili, add some more chilies. We have a quite impressive uh, selection of chili plants. They will grow nicely together and they will be very great friends. Yeah. Quite an interesting question here from Pat Acton. Yeah. Is there any one pod that grows well everywhere, all around the world? <laughs> I love questions like this. Uh, what the gardening team is trying to do is that we try to make sure that all pods will grow in any home. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I think most of the plants are reliable and uh, my personal favorites that I have in my town home and also at my um, uh, village home and uh, is like dwarf basil grows everywhere uh, lemon palm also mm -hmm. very reliable and you you want to have thyme at your house right you need it for cooking and exactly. basil is also yeah. seem to do quite nicely right. Indeed. But, but of course every plant has its own requirements we try to choose the seeds as wisely as we can to be to have the plants growing in every environment but you know there are some limits yeah. chris silla lau says hi do you have any plants that absolutely should not should not be placed next to each other. <laughs> I, good question, but I think the, the what concept, do you think? The concept of our <laughs> the concept of our of our garden is that you can, as a, as we say, you can grow any plants uh, from our collection together. That's the beauty of click and grow. Uh, yeah. What's anything you'd like to add? Well, 
<laughs> of course, there are nightshade plants, that tomatoes and chilies that usually don't go well with all the plants. But the thing with, with click and grow is that the root space is separated. So you can easily have a nightshade plants like tomato and chili, and you can place, um, well, basil goes with them great anyway, but you can also have a lettuce right next to them and they will be friendly to each other. So you don't really have to worry about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We've, um, we've uh, had a lovely time today speaking a little bit about uh, your interests. Um, you know, we'd like to know what the plants grow together. Um, thank you, Miriam, for demonstrating us oh. this uh, harvesting as well. Thanks. Um, we would like to give away a free plant pod. This is, uh, may come as a surprise to some of you, maybe not, but we'd like to give away a free plant pod to one of you who has commented today. And that plant pod will go to Pat Acton for her comments, is there any one plant pod that grows well everywhere all around the world? So thank you so much, all of you, for taking part. Uh, Pat, please contact us at press at clickandgrow.com. That's press at clickandgrow.com. Uh, give us your, your full name, shipping address, a telephone number. Uh, let us know that you've won a free plant pod in this uh, competition today, this giveaway, and we will arrange that for you. Thank you all of you for taking part in this uh, event. Thank you, Miriam, once again. Thank you to thank our you. visual team. Thank you to our team behind the scenes who've uh, arranged this and organized this. And most of all, thank you to you for taking part in Green January and for being part of our Click and Grow community. From all of us, happy growing.